Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Huck. Today I am doing a review for Spellbook of the Lost and Found by Moira Fowley Doyle. So this is a multi-perspective contemporary fantasy set in Ireland. It follows three groups of friends and what happens to them after a spell is cast to find what has been lost. It all starts at the annual bonfire where somebody casts a spell from a spell book that they have found to find something that they have lost. But when you cast a spell to find something that was lost, you must make a sacrifice in return and you don't always have control over what is sacrificed in return for finding what you have lost. So after the spell is cast, things in the town start going missing, not just from the people who cast the spell, but the entire town. It starts out small like hair clips, but as time goes on, larger and larger things go missing, including people. So this follows eight main characters that are in three groups of friends as their stories intertwine, as they realize the consequences of what has been done, as they lose things and find things, as they try to figure out what has happened and realize the consequences from what they have done, and try to right the wrongs that have happened because of this spell book. I really enjoyed this book. I read it really quickly actually. Um, I just felt like I had to know know what was going to happen. I found the plot really interesting and engrossing. Sometimes the plot could be a little bit difficult to follow because there are so many perspectives and there are these like three separate groups and like sometimes their stories intertwine. You're kind of trying to figure out how all of these people and their stories are connected and related. Overall though I found it really really enjoyable and I just really felt like I had to know what was going to happen. As for the characters, the characters were not the strongest part of this book for me. I did like them and I was really interested in knowing what was going to happen to them and like how they were doing and all of that, but I didn't like love them. It was really more the plot that was like keeping me in the book. Also, since there were so many characters and so many perspectives, I could get a little bit lost sometimes as to which character I was following. At the beginning of every chapter it has the name of the character, but apparently I don't pay attention to the names of the characters at the heading of chapters when I'm reading them. Also all of the characters had very um like plant names because there's like holly, hazel, um, olive, ivy, all like those kind of names and that made it kind of confusing uh, because they all had plant names especially holly and hazel because also Apparently I don't read full names, I just kind of go by the first letter or first couple letters of a name. So I'd be like, oh it's an H name, and then I would like realize I had no idea who I was reading their perspective from. But even if I didn't like love the characters, I did enjoy them a lot. I really enjoyed their friendships. A lot of them have very strong friendships, some of their friendships are tested throughout the story, but I really liked how much they cared for each other and how they were trying to protect each other. Also in this story the characters had a fairly good amount of diversity. There was one character who was half Indian, one character who was partially deaf or fully deaf in one of her ears and she wears a hearing aid which is referenced multiple times throughout the book. Um, there are two characters who are bisexual, there is one character who is gay, and there is a female-female romance in this also. So that was really cool. I really enjoyed those aspects of this as well. That if they were going to have this large cast of characters, I really liked that they had different kinds of representation mixed into this group. In terms of the writing, I really enjoyed the writing. Usually if I really like writing, I don't even notice it because I'm just so like in it and immersed, and I only really notice writing style when I don't like it. And when I was reading this, I was totally in it. I was so immersed in the story. I had to know what was going to happen. I ha loved the vibe that the writing created. I feel like it was very atmospheric. It had this very, um, creepy and eerie kind of feel to it, but it was also very whimsical and beautiful. So I loved that contrast of that like beautiful, whimsical, very magical feeling. A lot of it took place outdoors and had a lot of nature in it, but it also had this really eerie haunting feeling that was very creepy as well. And I just love that combination in the story and the writing. And it just was such a wonderful like atmospheric experience to read this. Also, this book takes place from May 7th to May 15th, I think. They put the dates on the chapters, and I was actually reading this book 
during that time period. I think I started it like May 11th and finished it May 14th. And so it was really weird to be reading it at exactly the time that the book took place. I didn't do that on purpose. I just like felt like reading it and then started and was like, well, this is weird. But that made it really cool and like kind of added another element to like the atmosphere of it because I could be like, oh, like, it is happening like right now, which was really fun for me. While I was reading this, it actually reminded me a little bit also of The Raven Cycle by Maggie Stiefvater. Not so much as in terms of the characters and the plot, because as I said, the plot is very different in this and the characters I think are not as um, like lovable as The Raven Cycle. That is one of the aspects of The Raven Cycle that's like so amazing. But in terms of the writing and the atmosphere of it, this reminded me of that a lot. This writing also I think used a lot of like metaphor and it had that like whimsical but eerie kind of feel that The Raven Cycle also has. So if you like that kind of writing and you really like that atmospheric eerie but beautiful feel to books, then I would suggest reading this. It was really really enjoyable. Although I would put a warning on this book for sexual assault. Overall, I really enjoyed this book. I loved the writing and the atmosphere of it. This was exactly what I wanted, was this like whimsical, eerie, witchy kind of book right now, and it was so perfect. And you know when people call books delicious to read, I know that um, Reagan from Peru's Project uses that word for books a lot. That was exactly what this book was for me. It was just delicious. I loved reading this book and I gave it 4.5 out of five stars. I definitely would recommend it if you want that whimsical, eerie, witchy kind of book. So that is all for my review of Spellbook of the Lost and Found. Thank you all for watching and until next time, bye!